In the meantime, in Ukraine, the anti-government mood in the east of the country remains strong as protesters there continue demanding greater autonomy from Kiev. Self-defense fighters are now in control of the local security service and police station in the town of Kramatorsk. It was the first to face government troops after Kiev launched a military crackdown on the popular dissent. Last week, diplomats from Russia, Ukraine, the U.S. and the EU outlined a peace roadmap that calls on protesters across the southeast to vacate administrative buildings they've been holding for weeks. Meanwhile, just kilometers away in the town of Slavyansk, funerals have been held for the activists who died in a shootout over the weekend. Locals are blaming pro-Kiev radicals for their deaths, who allegedly broke the Easter truce, breaching non-violence agreements. Kiev has halted the military crackdown on dissent in Ukraine's east so far. However, its military remains on high alert in the town of Izum. The location is strategically on the border of the Kharkov and Donetsk region. That's where the protests have been the strongest. And uh, let's now get reaction to the latest developments live uh, from the editor of the British political magazine Politics First, Marcus Papadopoulos. Uh, Marcus, welcome to RT. Very nice to, to see you here. Uh, the latest news coming out of Ukraine's east suggests the sides aren't really willing to comply with the Geneva agreements. Why are they not working to do so, you think? Well, there's very little surprise that the people in the east of the country who have taken up arms in defence of their regions against the extremists which are occupying Kiev have said they're not going to lay down their arms. And why aren't they going to lay down their arms? Because the illegitimate authorities in Kiev have reneged on the agreement at Geneva last week. And the agreement at Geneva last week, which was signed by the US, Russia, EU and the illegitimate authorities in Kiev, clearly stipulated that all, and I emphasize all, armed groups in Ukraine, wherever they are, Kiev, in the eastern regions, are to lay down their weapons. Now, not long after the agreement was signed last week, Kiev, went and said that it does not view the groups, the ultra-nationalist, the extremist groups, which are roaming around Kiev as illegal um, organizations, as illegal groups, and therefore they're not going to disarm them. So the Geneva Agreement has been broken. It's been broken by the illegitimate authorities in Kiev, and therefore no serious person, be it a journalist or a politician, is really going to expect the groups, the self-defense groups in the east of the country, to lay down their arms now. Mm. And uh, will painting Russia with the enemy brush again and again help solve the situation there? Sorry, could you repeat the question again, please? Absolutely. Do you think that painting Russia with the enemy brush again and again will help solve the situation? No, the demonization of Russia is not going to help one bit in resolving the situation in Ukraine. Um, Ukraine, it's a very complex country. Its borders were artificially drawn up in 1922 by Lenin. And, and as a result, Ukraine is a very regionalized country. And I think the only country in the world that truly understands Ukraine's delicate makeup is Russia. And Russia is the only country, the only party to the conflict in Ukraine, which has been playing a mature and reasonable um, part. And the, the, the fact that Western governments and Western media and the illegitimate authorities in Kiev are throwing all sorts of accusations at Russia is not only preposterous, but it just demonstrates that they they are not prepared to actually resolve this crisis in an objective mm. way. And therefore, I think it's very concerning for Ukraine's future. Right. Uh, before Viktor Yanukovych was ousted, the U.S. had frequently been seen having cosy meetings with the opposition. But Joe Biden doesn't seem so eager to talk to, to government critics right now. Why is that? Well, be simply because the illegitimate authorities in Kiev and their armed groups on the streets of Kiev are, are Washington's um, troops on the ground, so to speak. These are the people that Washington is banking on to tear Ukraine away from, away from Russia and bring it into the West's orbit, principally NATO and the European Union. And it was very interesting, but not surprising, to see Biden in Kiev today. He was talking about upholding Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and democracy, but he didn't spare a thought for the opposition politicians 
in Kiev, such as the Communist Party of Ukraine and the Party of Regions, who have been intimidated, who have been bullied into submission. That's not democracy. But then again, America is not genuinely committed to democracy. The killer question to pose to any American politician that claims his or her country is genuinely committed to democracy is, what about Saudi Arabia? Uh, Marcus, and very briefly, if you can, the U.S. Vice President has announced Ukraine will get $50 million worth of aid. Uh, does it mean promises have finally turned into action? No, because $50 million is a totally insufficient amount of money for a country which is in a dire economic situation and is in a dire political situation. And it shows that Washington is not really committed to the well-being of the Ukrainian people. Ukraine to Washington is just a pawn. It's a pawn to use against Russia to try and encircle Russia on its western borders. $50 million is quite simply a drop in the ocean. All right, Marcus Papadopoulos, editor at British political magazine Politics First. Thank you very much indeed for sharing your insight with us. We appreciate it.